Hi friends, I welcome you all here at TNV Academy. In this session, we are going to talk the clause 6.3, plan the service management system of an international standard ISO IEC 20000-1-2018, Information Technology Service Management. In this session, we shall cover all the requirements of clause 6.3. Plan the service management system in detail along with appropriate examples for your comfort. As the requirement of the clause 6.3 depends upon the requirements of clause 6.1 and 6.2, I would like to recommend you referring sub clause 6.1 and sub clause 6.2 of ISO 20000-1-2018 also for better understanding of clause 6.3. Now, what we are going to cover in this session. In this session, we shall discuss about subclause 6.3, plan the service management system. Let's discuss now about the outcome of this session. After completing this session, you will be enabled to understand and verify the implementation of the requirement of clause 6.3 of ISO 20000-1. 2018. You will learn about planning the service management system. Now, let's have an introduction of clause 6.3. Plan the service management system. Let me simply read the requirements of the clause 6.3 of the standard first. 6.3. Plan the service management system. The organization shall create, implement and maintain a service management plan. Planning shall take into consideration the service management policy, service management objectives, risk and opportunities, service requirements and requirements specified in this document. The service management plan shall include or contain a reference to Point 1. List of services Point 2. Known limitations that can impact the SMS and the services Point 3. Obligations such as relevant policies, standards, legal, regulatory and contractual requirements and how these obligations apply to the SMS and the services. Point 4. Authorities and responsibilities for the SMS and the services. Point 5. Human, technical, information and financial resources necessary to operate the SMS and the services. Point 6. Approach to be taken for working with other parties involved in the service lifecycle. Point 7. Technology used to support the SMS. Point 8. How the effectiveness of the SMS and the services will be measured, audited, reported and improved. Other planning activities shall maintain alignment with the service management plan. What are the mandatory documents under this clause? According to clause 6.3, the organization shall create, implement and maintain a service management plan. Planning shall take into consideration the service management policy, service management objectives, risk and opportunities, service requirements and requirements specified in this document. Now, let's start with clause 6.3, where the organization determines the need for change to the service management system, the change must be carried out in a planned and systematic manner. The organization must consider the purpose of the change and any of its potential consequences, integrity of the service management system, availability of resources, allocation or reallocation of responsibilities and authorities. The continuity and effectiveness of your SMS must be substantially maintained in the event of significant changes in your SMS or organization. For example, management, ownership, relocation, technology, product, the shift in customer base, etc. Changes must be carefully planned 
so as not to disturb your organization's ongoing capability and responsibility to effectively meet customer and regulatory requirements. In such instances, change control would require Point 1. Careful planning of nature and timeline for the changes. Point 2. Determining the impact or outcome of such changes. Point 3. Ensuring adequate resources are available to implement the change. Point 4. Top management authorization. Point 5. Change deployment and follow up. Next, review of the SMS by top management after changes are affected. The ISO 20000-1 requirements provide a strong basis for a management system for business that supports the strategic direction of the organization. Once the organization has identified its context and interested parties and then identified the processes that support this linkage. Once processes are determined, an organization will need to identify the risk and opportunities associated with these processes. To achieve the benefits associated with the determination of risk and opportunities, changes may be needed. These changes can be related to any element of process such as inputs, resources, persons, activities, controls, measurements, outputs, etc. Changes are intended to be beneficial to the organization and need to be carried out as determined by the organization. In addition, consideration of newly introduced risk and opportunities needs to be taken into account. There may be changes in SMS due to customer feedback, customer complaint, product failure, employee feedback, innovation, determined risk, determined opportunity, internal audit results, management review results, identified non-conformity. The changes may occur in, for example, processes, documented information, tooling, equipment, employee training, supplier selection, supplier management, and others. To achieve the benefits associated with changes, the organization should consider all types of changes that may need to occur. The successful management and control of these changes have become a core requirement within the organization's SMS. Some changes need to be carefully managed while others can be safely ignored. To determine the priority, the organization should consider a methodology that allows them to take into account. Point 1. Consequences of the change. Point 2. Likelihood of the consequence. Point 3. Impact on customers. Point 4. Impact on interested parties. Point 5. Impact on quality objectives. Point 6. Effectiveness of processes that are part of SMS. Steps to implement changes. Point 1. Define the specifics of what is to be changed. Point 2. Have a plan, task, timeline, responsibilities, authorities, budget, resources, needed information, others. Point 3. Engage other people as appropriate in the change process. Point 4. Develop a communication plan, appropriate people within the organization, customers, suppliers, interested parties, etc. may need to be informed. Point 5. Use a cross-functional team, review the plan to provide feedback related to the plan and associated risk. Point 7. Train people. Point 8. Measure the effectiveness. Prior to making a change, the organization should consider unintended consequences. After making a change, the organization should monitor the change to determine its effectiveness and to identify any additional problems that might be created. Records of some changes may be needed as part of the service management system. Now, coming to the important aspect of the standard, that is practice writing non-conformity 
under this clause. I would explain you the process of writing non-conformities. Auditor finding, action report, NC, AFAR number 3, date, company slash process, paper manufacturing, clause 6.3, plan the service management system, standard, ISO 20000-1-2018, category, major slash minor, non-conformity observed, including objective evidence, requirement 6.3, plan the service management system, the organization shall create, implement and maintain a service management plan, planning shall take into consideration the service management policy, service management objectives, risks and opportunities, service requirements and requirements specified in this document. The service management plan shall include or contain a reference to Point 1. List of services Point 2. Known limitations that can impact the SMS and the services Point 3. Obligations such as relevant policies, standards, legals, regulatory and contractual requirements and how these obligations apply to the SMS and the services. Point 4. Authorities and responsibilities for the SMS and the services. Point 5. Human, technical, information and financial resources necessary to operate the SMS and the services. Point 6. Approach to be taken for working with other parties involved in the service lifecycle. Point 7. Technology used to support the SMS. Point 8. How the effectiveness of the SMS and the services will be measured, audited, reported and be improved. Other planning activities shall maintain alignment with the service management plan, non-conformity evidence. During the verification of technology used to support the service management objectives of the organization, there was no evidence of availability of licensed large file compression utility was found. Auditor signature, audit acceptance, root cause analysis. Although the availability of file compression utility was found, however, the management representative MR missed to show licensed information of the same to the auditor. Correction Licensed information and invoice was printed and attached to the assets record to show the same during the audit. Corrective action. Copy of licensed information shall be printed and hard copy shall be kept at the office. Management representative will be custodian and would monitor the same. Responsibility. Top management MR. Proposed implementation date. Corrective action plan. Assessed by. Date. Verification of on-site closure to be verified in next assessment cycle, assessed by date. Now, coming to the common mistakes auditor do while auditing clause 6.3, plan the service management system. Some of the common mistakes made by auditors while auditing are Point 1. Putting questions which are irrelevant for the organization like purchase date of application software, etc. Point 2. Sometimes Auditor start thinking for the option, while auditor need to understand the client process and to decide if the client can achieve the result of the management standard system through their own process. An example could be like, auditor may think implementing MS SQL will be more feasible for organization rather than Oracle. Point 3. Auditors start consulting the client which is out of the reach of auditing. Like, auditor may ask client to purchase Norton utilities for disk functions, though this utility application might be expensive. Some other common mistakes are like, auditors report findings but don't provide evidence. Auditors believe the paperwork and ignore the facts. Auditors feel obliged to find errors. 
auditors allow cost cutting to staff the audit it is highly recommended that being an auditor you should avoid these common mistakes while doing iso audits to make it successfully implemented dear friends we have now come to the conclusion of this training session see you soon with an exciting new topic till then goodbye